Okay, so let's just jump right in and try building a site here that uses uh, the new routing infrastructure in ASP.NET 4.0. So I'm inside of a Windows 7 VPC here. I'm going to bring up Visual Studio 2010, and I'm going to do it by holding Control Shift down to launch as an administrator because I want to create a new site uh, within IIS for which we need administrative privileges. So I'm going to create a new uh, empty website here. And as I said, I'm going to map this onto the HTTP location so that it will, it will write directly to my uh, local Internet Information Services installation. And let's just call this uh, test route and select the empty website template. Uh, you do need to make sure that when you're creating a new site uh, that you have targeted .NET 4.0. The, the uh, web forms routing stuff is not available in earlier releases of ASP.NET. Okay, so um, all we have is a config file right now. Let's go ahead and add a page to our site. And this is just a standard ASP.NET page. We'll do default at ASPX. Let's um, put in a little bit of content here so we know where we are. Just call it the home page. And let's add one more page um, just so we have something else to map onto and we'll call it uh, page two. And also put some content in there that makes it easy to recognize. Okay, so if I run this site right now, uh, it'll run just like any other traditional web forms site where you navigate to the physical file through the URL and uh, ASP.NET will, of course, parse the page and turn it into a class definition, load that into the app domain, and dispatch the request. Um, so we can go to default at ASPX, we can go to page 2.aspx, and if we had other pages, we could go there as well. So what routing is going to do is uh, let us take over this URL scheme and do something completely different if we want to. So let's go try that out. Um, to use routing, I'm going to add a new global ASAX file. So we can have the uh, access to the um, application start event, which is where you're typically going to add routing configuration. And let's go ahead and uh, create a couple of URL mappings onto those two physical files that we just defined. So system.web.routing.routetable.routes. This is essentially the hash table that's maintained for us. And here's the new function that was added in ASP.NET 4, map page route. And give it the name of the route. I always like to name my routes with a route suffix, so it's clear when you're looking at the string what it refers to. Give it the actual URL you want to map onto without a preceding slash. So I'm going to call this just home. Uh, and we'll use home as an alias for default.aspx. And then the physical file, which in our case is default.aspx. Now notice, notice we can use the tilde syntax in ASP.NET here um, to uh, use the relative path uh, to the root and then drill down from there. So let's go ahead and try running this now. Now of course this won't change our startup page. Uh, it'll still be going, you know, Visual Studio will uh, launch it to the, to the root. But if I go to this uh, endpoint now, I should be able to type in home right after the um, virtual directory. And notice we're getting 404. Okay, so this is actually expected in this particular scenario because um, I have not told IIS that it should map all requests through the managed uh, modules that are installed. Uh, and by default, this, this URL is not going to get mapped onto an ASP.NET uh, endpoint necessarily, so it will not run through the managed modules. You can force this, though, in IIS 7 um, just by going to your configuration file adding an entry for system dot uh, web server and inside of here there's a modules element with a property an attribute called run all managed modules for all requests and that will make sure that all requests are run through the managed modules uh, which will now pick up the routing module that was installed now, if you're running just locally in the application ASP.NET development server, um, everything will work fine. It's when you actually go to IIS that you're going to see this, um, this behavior if you haven't set that configuration entry. So back to our home page here. Let's again try using home 
as the URL. And notice now we map fine onto the endpoint. So that's the basics. Let's just add one more really quickly here to show you how you could do this with multiple pages. So let's go to page 2.aspx and let's call this um, you know, whatever you want to call it, P2 in this case maybe. You do need to change the route to something different. Um, so let's just call this P2 route and we'll go ahead and run that. And now I should be able to use both home and P2 as URL um, accessors to those pages. Great. So those are the, uh, that's the way to add routing um, to your page.